just got a paddleboard and she's just gone a kilometre or two out to sea. A face plant in the skate bowl. This yeah. is killing me. Lifeguards play detectives. I just took it from it happened. Police come and I want to hurry it And what's so funny? Yeah, I'm a dog, check it out. He's just looking at her ass. <laughs> Bondi's watermen were born by the water and grew up in the surf. This was Reedy then. I used to hang out with my other buddies, not living the beach sort of lifestyle, I suppose, and didn't really grow up um, surfing and stuff. To become a lifeguard, Reedy went from fat to fit, but it was no easy road. He's got little or no athletic ability. I, I never took it as bullying from Corey. I mean, other guys saw it that way, but I mean, I think that, you know, sometimes learning the hard way is the best way. Reedy was a lifeguard, afraid of big waves. At the start, he was a bit regarded as a little bit of a cat, a little bit of afraid of the ocean and the, and the bigger stuff. You've got to go. All the fight you've got to go. This is not just protection for you, it's for the whole lifeguard service. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to fall off. It took a while, and, and now the boys have got a lot of respect for him. He's really fit. He's probably up there with one of the fittest guys at, at the moment. Lifeguarding has boosted Reedy's confidence. Now, it seems the sky's the limit. Um, I'm about to join 11 other elite athletes in trying to break the world 100-kilometre treadmill record. So this world record attempt is for the Kids Foundation. Yes. We're trying to raise money for kids that have just unfortunately been injured in accidents. And me and Bacon have gotten together to try and match it with some elite athletes. Obviously, I could never run a marathon as fast as Steve Monaghetti, but hey, if I can break a world record with him and hold his pace for five, ten minutes, then I'll be a happy man. I suppose I'd better get stuck into some training. It's, um, it's in two weeks. Extreme behaviour at Bondi is par for the course. Lifeguards see it all. But some behaviour still turns heads. Chessie the beanie. Yeah, go ahead. Looks like she's out there doing a bit of um, yoga now. Yeah, well, I just noticed that. Yeah, she's doing a bit of a yoga to, uh, to do yoga on a paddleboard. It, it looks pretty difficult. It's got good balance. Stand-up paddleboards are normally used for catching waves. Charlotte, a local yoga enthusiast, has pioneered a new use. I love being in the middle of nowhere with no one around me. And so the further I get out, the more blissful I find it. But Charlotte isn't experienced in the ocean. Floating out at sea has its risks. She's not that strong on the board, yet she'll go out in 20k plus winds out in the middle of the ocean, really. Charlotte's safe for now. The same can't be said for others on the beach. Thousands of beachgoers are spread across the sand, and each of them has a phone, a bag or a wallet. Now, one of those beachgoers has lost everything. It's all gone. All our bags. Oh, just took our bags. Long style bag and a, another backpack. They just took them both. Left our shoes and towels. Stephanie has come 50 kilometres from Sydney's west to relax at Bondi. As soon as you get up and go to for a swim, no, take it. You can't, you can't, can't leave anything. Lifeguards let Stephanie call her mum. My phone, my bag, everything got stolen. <laughs> I just took it from it. But a slight concern this morning has just become this afternoon's big problem. A familiar looking paddleboarder has been blown out to sea and can't get back in. That was a Bondi police. You just said the same thing about a kilometre offshore, so I might have to put a ski in the water. The boys have a sneaking suspicion who this might be. Basically, he's just got a paddle board and she gets out there, but I don't think she's that strong on the board, and especially if there's a bit of wind or a swell up, it's, 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 catch, it's caught her out today, you know, a strong offshore breeze, and 
turn into sort of 20k plus wins. She's just gone, you know, a kilometre or two out to sea. What are you doing? It's Charlotte, the yoga teacher. She's discovered the open ocean is no place to be saluting the sun. Yeah, I would have loved for her to come in here and give her a little bit of a word up on, you know, the fuss she causes. We get three or four lifeguards paying attention to get a ski in the water and sit it up and gone. Uh, jump, you got to jump on. You know, we're neglecting, you know, the beach here and, you know, potentially people are getting into trouble here. We're doing the right thing. Yeah, down on the mat. Yeah, that's good. Jake escorts her back to nearby Tamarama. She wasn't freaked out. She's just embarrassed. She knew, she knew that she, she couldn't get back. Yeah, jet ski to Bronny. I'm actually dropping her at Tamo, that's where she came from. So uh, I'm just dropping her at the back here, you can probably see me. Yeah, copy that. She doesn't want to take a paddleboard up the beach because she's embarrassed now, but it'd be more, it'd be more embarrassing getting winched up by a helicopter, I think, which it almost happened. In the tower, more victims of Bondi's bag thieves. My mate got out, and then he quickly comes back and says, oh, our bags are gone. H spots a teenager wearing unusual clothing for a day at the beach. No one's going to walk around like that, are they? He drifts backwards and forwards on the sand. So you're sure it's your bag? Yeah, no, no, it's just my mate. It's your mate's bag. My stop there and get some of it. Okay. What's your friend's name? No. Johnny. Johnny? Yeah. Yeah. That's my idea right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hoppo asks some hard questions. Who are you on the phone to? My mate. Nothing matches up, though. The name on the bag's not, not your mate. No, nah, they're just for name. You just give me a black bag. Yeah. No, absolutely nothing missing the bag. So you picked the wrong bag up? Yeah. That's what I told you. It's not my bag. He told me it's a black bag. Yeah. I'm telling the same thing that I, I told you earlier. That's my idea here, yeah, right here. He's going to hold anything until yeah. police come. Then another victim comes to the tower. Hey, this guy's had his bag stolen. Come, come in. Is this your bag? So this your bag? Yeah. So yes, that's the right bag. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I said. I said I wasn't sure what was the right bag. So right. Sure. Oh, really? If you want to hang, police are coming just so you can ID that. Okay, yeah. It's your bag that got. Yeah. Taken. Check in it. I don't know if yeah, you're going to put it. No, everything's in there. I took all the important stuff out, but it's good to get it back. Lifeguards have no power of arrest. Police soon back up. Got some of it on camera. Yeah. And yeah, I've cracked them. No, I'm you guys have safely. Yeah, it's great. What's your name, mate? Yeah, I'm here. I'm walking Yeah, it doesn't rain at pause at this joint. Sort of really pisses me off that we've got to do all this shit, but it's good to catch. Good to catch them. Hopefully deter him. Hey, my name's Carson Brown from uh, Waverley yeah, Police Station. Yeah. Um, at this point, you're under arrest for stealing the bag on the beach. Yeah, I know, but I told you. Despite the new beach. Yeah, you don't have to say I'll do anything if you don't want to. Do you understand that? Yeah. All right, just pop up for me. Yeah. Stand up. I'm just going to give you a quick search, all right? Turn me in the face that way. The boy is 16. A search reveals more suspect property. While the bag owner goes to make a statement, the alleged bag thief is on his way to be charged. As Bondi gets buffed, Reedy trains with his teammates for an upcoming tilt at the 100km treadmill record. But there's been an unexpected hitch in his preparations. Broke up with my girl of two years. We had a dog together. Uh, it was her dog originally, so she got him, won the, won the custody battle and took him away. So, unfortunately, I need a little bit of something in my life. You know, being a lifeguard and having the instincts of rescuing things, I, I like the idea of going out and rescuing a dog. Um, so I'm going to head over to the pound and um, hopefully find myself a, a nice little rescue dog. At the dog pound, it's love at first sight. His name's Muggsy. He was named after a little basketball player that was only five foot who used to play for the Charlotte Hornets named Muggsy Bogues. With Muggsy by his side, Reedy is getting some unexpected benefits. Is he your favourite? <laughs> He's saying, what are those things? What are those two things? I don't have them. Down on the sand, Bondi's hapless paddleboarder is back and still embarrassed. 
and trying to have a nice blissful experience and all I can hear is a helicopter and then coming closer I'm like oh my goodness it's killing. The next thing the Bondi rescue thing is coming out to rescue me I was like humiliating. But Charlotte is not too embarrassed to spruik the benefits of her novel form of yoga. Because Stand Up Paddle Ward yoga is so fantastic for surfers it makes perfect sense like for the rescue boys to do it as part of their fitness regime. Plus, I think it'd be really entertaining to just see how good they are doing yoga on, a, on their boards. The challenge has been thrown down by a very beautiful looking girl to do some uh, yoga on a stand up paddleboard, and it's definitely not my cup of tea, but I've, I've got the perfect man for the job. I think Reedy, recently single, he'll be up for a bit of uh, yoga with her for sure. For the moment, recently single Reedy is none the wiser. Risk taking at Bondi comes in many forms. The local skate bowl has more than its fair share of casualties. 19-year-old Dale landed face first in the bowl. All right, mate, what happened? Oh, I've just gone over the hip on my bike and yeah. my front tire I've just missed the mate, you got a, thing. Yeah, yeah I'll come straight down on my egg on your head. You hit, you smashed your face. I landed face right? first. Did you black out? No. You got a solid head back. trauma can be life-threatening. You're dizzy or feeling sick or I don't like feel that. sick or dizzy, like yeah, I just got a lot nice. of I got a lot of pain and I know yeah. I've got a high pain tolerance, but this yeah. is killing me. Jake is not only concerned about head trauma, there's a risk Dale has suffered a spinal injury. I'm starting to get a bit of pain up through here. Oh, up through the top of your head up here. How bad is it? One to ten. About oh, six, so about mm. six. Okay, Dale. Yeah. We're just gonna um I'm just going to put yeah, this collar on you. You comfortable with it? Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah, it can never beat the concrete. Same as you can never beat a rock. Skaters hit the concrete, surfers hit the rock. Stand up just nice and slow. Yep. Get your head straight. There you go. That's it. You're right. You're right. The Dale. traumatic experience sends him into shock. You right, Dale? Yeah. You're right? Yeah. I'm really dizzy. Yeah, that's okay. Is that all right? I feel right? Yeah, it's getting some off here. Paramedics perform basic mobility tests. Can you pull me towards you? Does that cause you any pain to do that? Yeah. It does. Where? In the neck? On uh, my right side. All right. Did you lose consciousness? Uh, not that no, no. OK. All right, see you, Dale. See you, Thanks. See you. After two days in hospital, Dale returned to Bondi with more than a story to tell. What about neck pain? Anything? Oh, done them. There's something in the back of my head. I've got to go get a check. Oh, you've got like, an head injury because yeah. you whacked your head pretty hard, eh? Uh, I broke a nose, broke an eye socket, and just don't really know the rest until I get it all checked out. Yeah, what, do you, what do you reckon about $60 helmet? You reckon yeah. you'd be, you be buying yeah, one of them? Yeah, I'll buy one of those, Mate, for sure. Those, that thing will save your life. But there's one thing Dale needs to get. Did you leave anything else here? Just your bike? Nah, just your bike. All right. Hope your, hope your head injuries are all right? Yeah, so do I. All right, mate. Right. Have a good Thanks, one. boys. See you later. Bye. It's been a roller coaster ride for Reedy. He lost his girlfriend, found a dog, but there's still something missing. You know, I've done King's Cross at four in the morning. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm willing to try anything, really. The boys in blue decided to play matchmakers with who else but Charlotte, the floating yogi. The good thing about having a big board is that it's easier to do yoga on. The bad thing about having a big board is that um, it's harder to carry. And you've got more chance of taking people out in bigger stuff. Exactly. So go. If it's a day, and he's going really well for himself. You know, some of us have got to go to extremes just to find a date, I guess. Hey, if it works, it works. She's fit. She looks great. Why not? Rock and roll. First move, getting past the breakers. Have high expectations on her getting out, but we'll see what happens. She, look at she, at least she's standing up now. Second move, avoiding unwelcome attention. Third move, the downward dog. It's like heavily clutching at straws, like trying to incorporate yoga and paddle boarding. Uh, yeah, what do they call it? The, the praying mantis. No, it's called the dirty dog. Or something. The dirty dog and the praying mantis. <laughs> At least he's um, giving us something to laugh about. Here it is, downward dog. Yeah, check it out. Downward dog, check it out. He's just looking at her ass. 
<laughs> yeah, he has definitely got colon problems. <laughs> you know how when you get asked what's one of the yeah. stupidest yeah. things you've ever seen at Bondi? I'll tell you what, I've just seen it's it. It's an Iric. Reedy gives her some surfing tips in return. With room for improvement. Thank you, though. I'm a yoga pro, not a, not a surfing stand up pedalboard pro. No, you went good. It was fun. That was awesome. I feel a little bit more flexible already. Next day, and there's a rare combination of king tide and high surf. Can I get you to move over, please? With a throng of poor swimmers, the conditions are lethal. Tides are really high. It's going from like 1.8 to 0 0.2. There's quite a difference in the tide. And it's changing now. Uh, it's a completely different beach now than it was this morning. Maxi spots two swimmers in trouble. Maxi heads to backpackers to watch the scene there closely. I just get him out of that whole area. It's pretty conch. Yeah, just turn to the concerns out there, guys. Can you return to shore? It's a very dangerous out there today. You are swimming in a dangerous area. Backpackers Rip has a tight grip on the swimmers. But there's one lifeguard and two victims. Maxi scoops up one swimmer, then another. But now there's a third swimmer 10 metres further out. Paddling through the swell with two patients on board is impossible. Oh, there's three patients. Where'd the third one come from? Finally, Bacon heads for the third man. Luckily, a surfer gets to him first. Harry is a Dutch backpacker. It's the first time he's been to the beach in seven years. The situation can escalate super quick when the swells up like this. You can lose a patient so easily in that surf, so... In the treacherous conditions, Maxie still has to get two grown men back to shore. Maxie, look! No, they're very lucky blokes. We just got to them in time. Harry is back on land but not out of danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a headache. If you have taken a lot of water, you can get secondary <laughs> drowning if you take it into your lungs. So what you need to do, as soon as you start feeling sick, just come straight up to the lifeguard tower and go see the GP, all right? Water in the lungs can still prove fatal days after being rescued. Did you swallow any water earlier? Oxygen helps him breathe more efficiently. Wake up. I can uh, stand up. You can't stand up. Because he's young. I reckon he's getting worse. Yeah. Yeah. Harry is unaware it was Bacon who saved him. No, but this guy he was. He, her, he did rescue me on time, so. Was he yeah. good looking? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like a hero, a legend. Yeah. We'll get you a bit of water. I reckon you'll be feeling better in no time. After an hour's rest, Harry improves. I thank you guys for the help and thank you and I hope, I think you guys are doing a good job. Tom, he hasn't seen the ocean in seven years. I said, mate, today's not the very best day to come down and see an ocean. But uh, he said his lessons learnt, you know, he's probably not gonna see the ocean for another seven years. <laughs> it's D-Day for Reedy and his team at a Bondi gym. Their world record treadmill attempt is just underway. One kilometre down, only 99 to go in five and a half hours. That's a kilometre in every three and a half minutes. We're more than halfway through our 100 metre treadmill record. A webcam lets Bondi's lifeguards follow the action. Well done, Rudy, mate. We really love you. You and Bacon, outstanding effort, guys. Australian marathon legend Steve Monaghetti picks up the pace. It was like hanging around, I'm stepping on the treadmill right after Steve Monaghetti, and then I'm expected to run beyond my means. So much pressure. After more than five gruelling hours, the result is far from certain. Um, I've worked for Guinness World Records for about 13 years, and I've seen a lot of fantastic things happen. I'm very, very sorry to say that Peaks Fitness Health Club in North Carolina, you've had your record smashed. Yay!
Reedy, the tubby boy turned lifeguard and now world record holder. If I was that chubby kid when I was 16, there is no way I could even do six on the treadmill. To now have a world record against my name, I'm just ecstatic.